Hey guys, Daniel here with Gun Mag Warehouse with another video for you from Grand Thumb. He's gonna make you a better shooter with some dry fire practice. You're welcome. If you've ever shot your Glock low left and you thought it was the sights, but it was actually you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, Grand Thumb here with Gun Mag Warehouse and today, we're going to be talking about a subject near and dear to my heart, and that is going to be dry fire. So the question is, what is dry firing? Well, you're going to take your firearm, you're going to unload it, make sure that it's clear and unloaded. Once that has been determined, what you're going to do is you're going to be pulling the trigger with no cartridge in the chamber, hence dry firing. So why is dry firing important? Well, for a multitude of reasons, before we hit that, let it be known that with modern center fire firearms, dry firing is perfectly okay. In fact, it is more than okay. You should be doing it because that is going to make you a better shooter overall. So about a solid 80% of my shooting is uh, dry firing. So get into the range is great. You actually do need to, of course, fire live rounds and you need to get good doing that. However, I don't have a range in my backyard and if you do, you're lucky. But even still, it's expensive to shoot that much. So I do a lot of dry firing and it's going to make you a much better shooter. So I'm going to explain to you guys a couple things that I do when I'm dry firing to make sure that I get better. Because if every time you go to dry fire, you just kind of draw your gun and just start kind of uh, pulling the trigger, that's not going to make you a better shooter. What's going to make you a better shooter is deliberate practice. So when it comes to dry firing, the first thing that I typically do is I'll dry, I'll bring my weapon up, make sure it's unloaded, and then what I'll do is I'll simply work watching the front sight. And what I'll do is my target will be a small one inch piece of tape. I'll have several of them along the wall. That way I can transition down targets as I'm moving. And the whole point is I'm watching my front sight and making sure that every time I pull that trigger, that my sight isn't moving and it's staying still and on target and that my trigger pull is consistent and then pulling that trigger directly to the rear into the center of my chest and that way I'm getting that good deliberate practice. Now after I've been working that for a while I like to do a couple other things. I like to work, work transitions and another thing I like to do is work from the holster. So depending on what firearm you're using whether that be a Glock, um, obviously for dry fire with Glock, Glocks that works just as well. Just cycle the slide Work it, watch that front sight, and make sure it doesn't dance. If every time you go to fire, you're pulling that gun down, then you know you have something to work on, and that's good. We always want to push ourselves to failure. So once I've kind of warmed up a little bit, I'm going to start working from my holster. So the biggest thing is being nice and consistent and practical with your holster. So drawing it, making sure that you're getting a good grip, and then you're going to be pulling your shot. Now with this, to make sure that I'm being honest, I like to use a shot timer with a par time. So typically what I do to start, especially for my draws, is I'll be about five feet away with the one inch piece of tape. I'll set my par time at three seconds and on buzzer, I'll bring my weapon up and I'll draw. I'll either do a double action pull out of, off a of Beretta or I'll do a normal pull from my Glock. So I'll start that up. So nice and slow to start. Slow myself down, being deliberate. Okay, so three seconds is very easy, so I'm gonna start working it down much faster. So we're gonna work it to two seconds now. So two seconds from draw to shot. Okay, work that again. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to drop that time down to 150. I'm going to keep working that faster and faster until I hit my failure point. Once I hit my failure point, I'm going to keep trying. Okay, 150 is good. Okay, once I've hit 150, I'm going to drop that down. And again, I need to be honest with myself. How are my shots doing? Are my shots on target? Now, if you're not sure, you can always use some type of laser bore sighting device. So in this case, I have the G sight laser training cartridge. So those work, you can insert those into your chamber, and then every time you fire, they're going to shine a laser. That way you can see where your shots are going. So keep yourself honest. You don't have to, but it's something that can be helpful. So running it down to 1.25 seconds. 
Okay. Try that again. Okay. I jumped the gun on that one. Okay, so we're going to bring that down to 115. Okay, I think I can do this in one. So we'll just drop that down to one second flat. And the whole point is that I'm not breaking my shot, it's not drop or anything like that, and being nice and consistent. Okay, so about one second is about my limit. I can go below there once I start practicing more and kind of get into it. But the biggest thing is that you're honest with yourself. Now, after I've worked a little bit of from the holster, what I like to do is I would like to work the reset. The reset is very important. So what the reset is, is every time you pull that trigger, you need to let that trigger forward a certain amount before it resets. So holding that trigger to the rear, you let that trigger f fall forward. And there's my reset right there. So that is going to be something that's really important to work. So what I like to do is I like to take one target, I'll depress the trigger. Once I've done that, I'll cycle the slide. And then what I'll do is I'll work from the reset, I'll reset the gun, and then drop the hammer. So what's important to do here is a lot of people, when they work resets, they're hitting the reset, and then they're very slowly firing. However, when you're firing, if you want to get faster, you're working that reset really quickly. So what I like to do is I like to really work that reset like I would in fast fire. And that's going to get you significantly better when you start working that. You can do that with Glocks as well. Um, besides that, another th product that can be helpful is a dry fire training mag. So we got one right here. It's called the dry fire mag. You're going to insert it. Once you pull the trigger the first time, it's then going to then work off the magazine itself, and then you can work those shots and work those resets, and that is a good product. There are also other products, like the CERT Pistol Trainer. It's basically a laser pistol <laughs> that fires a little laser, so you can see where your shots go, much like the Borsider that I have in this Beretta, and then uh, it allows to you to simulate the Glock trigger pull and all that type of stuff. There's a lot of different CERT trainers out there or different types of laser training pistols, and they're very helpful as well. But my point is with dry fire training is that you don't need something fancy. All you need is the firearm that you have unloaded, and you're just going to work that dry fire, and that's going to make you a significantly better shooter. So ammunition is expensive. However, dry fire training is completely free except for your time. So get out there and actually do dry fire training because of everything that I do, um, dry fire is probably what I do the most of and I've seen a lot of improvements from doing it. So get out there and actually dry fire train and get better at shooting because that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Guys, thank you for watching and uh, I've got nothing else for you.